Hi guys, Scott here again. This is the fourth video on detailed drawings and in this video we're going to take you through some different examples of circular fits that you might use in common parts that you could design. As mechanical engineering designers, it's going to be your responsibility to figure out which fits are going to be required to make together the parts that you're designing. Here we've got an example shown over here on the left of a shaft coupling. So what this shows is we have one cylindrical shaft coming in from this side and another cylindrical shaft coming in from this side. Both of these shafts have got little slots milled in them here. This is the slot and they have a key which sits in this slot that enables it to transmit torque or drive from say this shaft to this coupling and then through the key to this other shaft over here. So it's only shown in section there, but this side also has this key here, which sits in a keyway, which is actually uh, milled into this shaft over here. So this is a shaft coupling, and we're gonna take a look at the different fits that might be required in different places on this shaft coupling to ensure that it fits together properly and that it works correctly. So if we look at the shaft itself and think about how it's going to fit inside this first half of the shaft coupling. What we do to figure out what kind of fit it might require is to look into our engineering drawing handbook, Appendix A 4.4, very useful resource. And in Appendix A 4.4, they have a, a breakdown and a description of some of the different fits that, avail that are available to you as designers. And so we read through this and look for an application that is as close as possible to the application that we're designing for. So in this one, we're reading through the different examples and we have a H7K6 fit. We'll worry about these numbers and letters later on. And so it says here that these are true transition fits, which means that there's always going to be some clear between the shaft and the hole that it's going into. On average they have zero clearance and should be used for location and some slight interference uh, where some slight interference can be tolerated. Uh, it helps eliminate vibrations because they're a reasonably uh, tight fit and low clearance and typical applications are clutch members keyed to shafts which is very similar to what we've got over here gudgeon pins in piston bores and hand wheels keyed to shafts. So this sounds like uh, the clutch members keyed to shaft. This is pretty close to our application. So we may use a H7K6 fit for this example. So if that's 20 millimeters in diameter of the shaft, we'll say for the moment that this is a diameter 20 H7K6 fit. That's something that we make a decision on as a designer, but this is not a, enough information to communicate to the person manufacturing it uh, what the actual numerical tolerance needs to be. Let's look at some of the other examples on this uh, shaft coupling. If we look now at a bolt, which bolts through, and there may be four or five or six of these around the perimeter of this coupling to hold the two pieces together, uh, we've got bolts going through holes in both sides of the coupling, and it's held in place by a nut. And we'll learn later that this nut has little uh, holes cut out of it, little slots. So we call this a castellated nut and we can put a pin through them to stop the nut coming um, unwound. And so let's have a look at what fit might be appropriate uh, in our appendix for these type of uh, applications. So if we read through it, we come across H11, C11. So fits involving uh, very large clearances of the type needed for positional fits and some aspects of structural engineering and building design. So this would be classified as a very slack or coarse clearance fit can be used also for static course clearance fit where ease of assembly must be assured as is the case when positioning mating pins and holes. So this is probably going to be appropriate in this case here. We want the bolts to be able to go in quite easily with a fair bit of clearance and then once we tighten them up uh, there will be some friction between these two parts and also uh, the bolt here will carry the, the drive forces, the torque forces between the two parts. So that's probably appropriate for our needs in this circumstance. So we specify that at a diameter 8, H11, C11 fit. Once again, these fits specified are not enough for someone to make the part. They're just what we're going to use to go to our table now and look up these tolerances so that we can actually specify the deviations on the holes and the shafts.